What's up dudes, on my last video I mentioned the large format 3D printer that we were expecting to arrive and it has since arrived and since it did I realized that the room that it was going to go in was just not very nice. It had bare concrete floors and it was just ugly so I figured I could at least put some carpet down and that would make the room a lot nicer so I went out I got some carpet I came back with it and I realized this whole area is cooled with a swamp cooler and swamp coolers add a lot of moisture into, into the air. Moisture is really bad for certain types of plastics that we're going to be printing with, so I wanted to kill that problem before it started and I got a mini split air conditioner. Now the problem is the mini split air conditioner is too small to cool this whole patio off and it would be a waste of electricity anyways. So after that problem was realized, I made this wall and the door to make the room smaller so I could put the air conditioner in this room and not have to cool off the rest of this patio. So with all that work being done, I couldn't leave the room unpainted. And since I was painting the room, I also went ahead and did the graffiti wall that I've always been wanting to do. So I made this and now I'm here with Owen and we have a room full of 3D printer that we are slowly putting back together or putting together for the first time. And uh, yeah, this is gonna take a while. So Owen here is with Technic Competition, the nonprofit we're partnered with in our engineering and 3D printing endeavors. He's going off to school for engineering in England of all places, so we're making the most of our time together trying to get familiar with this machine before he's off overseas eating beans and toast or whatever it is that they have for breakfast. He's also going to be designing some parts for sale on the Technic Competition website, so him and I together are gonna be making some cool stuff for cars. So with that, I want to show you the test subject I'm using to put this machine through its paces and see what kind of capabilities we now have. But before I show you the new project we're working on, I got to show you the new member of the family that it's going to be installed in. 1994 Toyota 4Runner. This thing has 90,000 original miles on it. And because of an electrical problem that the previous owner didn't want to deal with, I picked this thing up for $2,000. Look at this thing. It's like a dang mausoleum in here. It's like, I've never bought a used car with no tears in the seats. This is pretty, pretty incredible. I am, yeah, I'm gonna absolutely love this thing. I was tempted to sell it for a profit because I know I definitely could get more for it than I paid for it. But uh, no, I think this thing's gonna stay in the family for a long time. So you guys can probably expect to see a little bit of off-road action on the channel and probably some fuel economy action as well because my plans for this are to make it both more fuel efficient because it currently sucks on gas mileage. It gets like 15 miles a gallon or something like that and also more off-road capable. So I don't normally see people combine those two things. They usually completely throw aerodynamics and fuel economy out the window for the sake of big tires and big push bar and winch and all that stuff so I want to keep it in mind when I'm um, modifying this thing it's not my main priority I have the race car and the 3d printing business to operate first and foremost but it's a fun side project and this is our first entry into our fuel efficient off-road modifications this man just look at that build plate dude this is the size well as soon as it gets up a little bit higher um, once the print is more completed It'll be the size of the entire radiator on the Toyota. So this is a front shroud uh, designed to reduce the amount of air that has to go through the radiator in order to cool it off. So it's going to be part of a push bar design uh, that I'm gonna make myself. Uh, so hopefully this will make it more aerodynamic and also uh, give me a better approach angle and a little bit of rock protection as well. So this is the completed shroud. Pay no attention to the mess on the desk. Like I said, we're at the tail end of the remodel and we're organizing. We're not quite organized, so it's, it's a work in progress. This is the complete model of what the shroud's gonna look like on front of the radiator. It's gonna restrict the air that goes in there so that the air can go over the top where it's a lot easier to go through than it is in the engine bay where there's all sorts of little stuff for the air to have to make its way around or under the bottom, which where there will eventually be a belly pan or belly tray for the truck. So it has notches and cutouts for the hood latch and the refrigerant lines. And there will also be a push bar made with one inch um, tube uh, that goes around the outside of this and hopefully makes the car more off-road capable and also fuel efficient. 
and I'll have to, you know, panel the outside of it and all that. I don't know how well you're able to see in here because of the glare, but a little bit of exciting unintended testing uh, happened during the recording of this video. And during the time that this panel was open so that I could get a good shot of the shroud, um, I think the part cooled off so much that it uh, opened up a gap on the backside, which was already having a hard time printing because it had that long straight area that's really subject to cooling and shrinking because this is a ASA material. Um, so uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty imperative that this thing never gets opened uh, with something especially so thin and tall as this is. I'm printing a two millimeter line um, and a single perimeter so there are no um, there's only one line of thickness uh, keeping this whole thing together it's actually quite strong um, but uh, very subject to temperature changes as we can see so here's the crack up close on the completed print it happened just because i opened the hatch and let that cold air get in there it's crazy how sensitive something like this is to a gust of cold air or the hatch being open for a couple minutes but other than that Look at this thing, it's freaking huge. The size of a radiator in a single print. I'm blown away by the capabilities I now have with this thing. It's quite strong as well because there's only a single perimeter. You don't have the void that happens you know, between two perimeter lines, that cracking sound you hear when you get a 3D printed part and put stress on it. You don't get any of that. It's got good elasticity and it's, it's very, very strong. I'm not worried about this one because I'm making a new one right now, but uh, there were some problems uh, other than the crack. We got some crazy warping, I mean, which led to the crack in the first place. Um, so on the new model that I'm printing now, I added some ribs in here to hopefully uh, give it some structure and a different direction to shrink in when the unit's cooling, or the, when the material's cooling off as it prints. I also added uh, some ribs here because we had a crack uh, form near the slot because the nozzle would, you know, push past this because it moves around a little bit towards the top because of that warping. Um, so the print ended up a little bit too high. So every time the novel nozzle made a travel move, it would uh, rip this up. So I'm pretty excited for this next print. It's got 12 or so hours left to go. I just wanted to give you guys an update for today because it's been so long. This is making a lot of noise can't lean on that thing. So in the next video, I'll show you the result of how this print comes out and I'll also give you a tour of the remodeling I've been doing and the upgrades in the six week hiatus since last time I posted a video. And uh, yeah, until then, stay tuned and see you soon.